a THOG video. Hi and welcome to Mike's book vlog. Well today I'm going to be talking about Betrayer by Aaron Dembski Bowden. Um, I'm very lucky to get a almost, brand, well, almost brand new, it is a brand new copy but it's only been very recently released. Um, Betrayer is part of the Horus Heresy series being released by B Black Library within the Warhammer 40k universe. I am a big Warhammer 40k fan, so, and particularly the books, so do expect me to feature more of these as time goes on. Just to give you a little bit of a primer if you're not up to speed with the Horus Heresy or Warhammer 40k. Basically the Horus Heresy is set in a time roughly 30,000 years from now. Humanity is spread across the galaxy in a so-called Imperium of Man. The Imperium is led by the Emperor. Um, this is a unaging man. Um, who's been around since the depths of time and he has massively powerful psychic powers. Now he has made two things. One, he has made the Prime Arches. These are 20 individuals created from his own genetic material to be leaders of the Imperium, to go out and conquer the galaxy in his name basically. They all differ in a variety of ways. Uh, they're not identical. Uh, one has wings, one has the power of invisibility, uh, one is a powerful psyker. Um, they are all great warriors and generals to lead armies, um, but they all have their own idiosyncrasies and characters and uh, talents as it were. Now the problem with the Primarchs is that when they were being created they were taken by the powers of chaos, often referred to as demons, and scattered across the galaxy, forcing the Emperor to then spend decades searching for them to bring them back and put them in charge of his armies. So in the meantime, uh, when he lost the Primarchs, he then went and created hundreds and thousands of genetically enhanced human soldiers called Space Marines. These he feature heavily through Warhammer 40k. Um, Space Marines perform well in excess of normal humans, faster actions, faster thinking, they have all kinds of organs which make them do special things like they don't need to sleep. Um, they wear typically heavy power suits of armour. They have received a little bit of the power of the Prime Arches, and each Space Marine Legion was designed to be led by specific Prime Arch, um, sharing the same genetic material as their own Prime Arch. But Space Marines are far weaker than the Prime Arches. The Space Marines are, an are a genetically enhanced human, Prime Arches are a custom built, designed superhuman. Um, without going into too much detail, there's a rebellion. Roughly half of the Prime Arches rebel against the, um, the Emperor for a number of reasons, but we find it all, behind it all is the powers of chaos, and the Horus Heresy details that rebellion. Now, uh, Betrayer uh, feature, features or focuses on mainly two of the Prime Arches, uh, Lorgar and Angron, who are on the side of the rebels. Lorgar is unusual in that he, of all the Prime Arches, never really felt fit to be a war general. He's almost more of a philosopher. You, you, before he rebelled, he used to raise worlds that worship the emperor. So yes, a little bit of an unusual primarch. He leads the wor the word bearers space means legion. And before the rebellion, they used to spend years on planets, as as I say, making the populations worship the emperor as a god. Now they are still very religious, but rather than the emperor, they are now worshiping the gods of chaos. Logar, in fact, instigated the rebellion from his interactions with Chaos. The other Primarch, um, Angron, he leads the World Eaters Special Means Legion. Angron is rage incarnate. He has electronics hammered into his brain stem called the Butcher's Nails that encourages the desire to kill. Almost all of his legion have copied this, so they're all highly destructive killers. This isn't actually that good because they only get pleasure from killing and makes them habitually just enact utter rage, killing anything within reach, which isn't ideal when you're trying to command an army. The story focuses on Lorgas and Angron's legions as they attack the 500 worlds of Ultramar. Uh, this is a group of planets commanded by one of the loyal Primarchs, Robert Gillimon. Um, his legion, the Ultramarines, are experts at warfare. They have very thorough plans, strategies, tactics to follow in any kind of combat and they are definitely a force to be reckoned with. They are probably one of the best legions of all the space marines. I know I'm probably going to get loads of hate for that because I'm sure everyone has their favourites. 
Um, I will say that I was never lucky on the Ottomarines until I read No No Fear, which details the attack of the word bearers on the planet of Kol, Kalf, uh, controlled by the Ottomarines. And that book really made me understand the lovely Ottomarines, so I was truly able to you know, really get behind them and want them to win. But in this book, what the author does, which I love, is that he lets you understand these uh, these characters, these, their motiva motivations, and even make the character feel for them and want them to win. Aaron Demsky Bowden is an expert at doing this. If anyone has read his Night Lords books knows, he's able to give the bad guys, as you want, might call them, real character. All too often the bad guys are simply shown as one-dimensional beings that just want to kill everything on the planet. Here, you want the bad guys to, to win. You want Logar to save his brother. You want Arjul Tal, one of the space, one of the word bearers, to protect Khan, a query of the of the world eaters. As I say, I find this really interesting because when I read No No Fear previously, I was really on the side of the Ultramarines. So I was really conflicted within myself when I read this book as to who I wanted to win, and I kind of wanted everyone to win, which obviously can't happen. But you know, it's it's interesting to have that sort of. Um, interaction within myself. A lot of the story circles around the interaction between Ar Arjul Tau, who is one of the captains of the word bearers, and Khan, as I say, he's a query to Angron of the world eaters. Very interesting. Now, you couldn't really get two legions more at odds than the word bearers and the world eaters. The word bearers slowly advance, blessing everything in sight. All the world eaters are a rabid pack of wolves just slaughtering anything and anything that is within sight. Somehow these these two individuals though have managed to become comrades in arms. Um, Azul Tal is fighting a demon within within him and tries to become the voice of reason dis despite this this demon which is inside him, is built into him now, um, wanting him to slaughter everything. Whilst Khan fights to not succumb to the implants in, in his brain stem which encourage him to kill. So they're both fighting themselves whilst sort of helping each other. It did surprise me, really surprised me, how much I enjoyed this book because um, Angon and Loga are two Primarchs who never really appealed to me. Angon always seems a bit of a one dimensional kill everything character. Loga is this philosopher who's not really that good in battle. He doubts himself. So I wasn't really expecting to connect with either of them of them. But this book gave me insight into both of the people, especially Angron and some of the background to him. And you get to see some of his character beyond his obvious urge to kill and destroy. I do strongly recommend buying this book. Once again Aaron Damsky Building has written a fantastic piece to be enjoyed, so really, really recommend it. Thanks for watching and see you next time on Mike's book vlog. Bye!